What is up everyone, I'm Scratch, welcome to the channel, this is another Raid Shadow Legends video, we are currently on the test server guys, we're gonna have a look at the freaking crocodile coming to Raid Shadow Legends, Krokmar the Devourer, and man, I gotta say, it, he looks like a very interesting nuker, I don't think he's gonna be top tier for classic arena, at least for platinum arena, but for live arena, he will be solid, and the reason for it is because you need to have heroes with survivability for that, and that's why a lot of champions are not being used in live arena, at least for the higher end, because you need survivability, you need Nacrit with them. So if Nacrit gets banned, your nukers are kind of like in, in trouble, you know? So having champions like this will actually be pretty interesting. So let's jump straight into the review and check out the skills. His base stats are fairly good. 22k HP, 1.1k defense, 100 speed, 63 crit rate, very nice. It doesn't require accuracy. Or resistance which is very nice with a1 attacks an enemy attacks all enemies one time if the first attack is critical so that's pretty nice because you're gonna make this aoe similar with uh, how big an uses his uh, own a1 then the a2 attacks all enemies places a shield buff on this champion for two turns equal to 20 percent of the damage inflicted also heals this champion by 10 percent of their max hp for each critical hit so if you're going to do four critical hits, you're going to get a 40% heal back, guys, okay? 40% heal back and 20% shield, which will definitely give you some decent survivability. That's why I really, really like this champion, because he brings his own survivability with him, which is very, very nice. He doesn't uh, need a different champion to necessarily keep him alive, you know? Then you have the A3. Places an increased crit rate and an increased crit damage buff on all allies for 3 turns. Then grants an extra turn. This will be on a 4 turn cooldown. And just generally, this is not a bad skill whatsoever, the Apex Predator. Now, I would still prefer to build this champion close to 100% crit rate. Because you know what? The opponent might bring in a lockout champion. He might lock your champion. You're not going to be able to buff that crit rate. And instead of smashing them with a1 you're just gonna hit none crits which will make your a1 to be single target rather than aoe so i feel like i prefer to go with full crit rate even though i'm sacrificing some crit damage or some other stats just to try to get him to that full crit rate regardless the fact that he actually buffs with crit rate and he can keep it up for the entire duration of the fight you know then the passive Whenever this champion attacks, decreases the target's attack or defense by 5%, as well as accuracy or resistance by 5%, depending on which stat is the highest, stacking up to 30. So let's just say he's attacking a Harima. He's going to decrease uh, her defense. Let's just say he's attacking a, a champion like Duchess. Again, Duchess will have more defense than attack. It's going to decrease uh, the defense on that champion. So keep that in mind. That's how this champion will work, he is a pretty good affinity spirit, uh, the only counters to him are kind of like uh, Elva having a Rotos because they're magic champions, and there are not many other magic champions that are really, really at the top of the, of the meta, you know, so pretty interesting champion all, uh, all around, what I'm going to do guys, I'm quickly gonna show you the multipliers before we're gonna move from here, so the A1 has a 0 0.18 multiplier, the A2 has a 0 0.3, it's not higher than Magnar, Magnar has a 0 0.25 and a double hit, so that makes it literally 4.5 multiplier from Magnar, so this definitely has higher multipliers. Now you can empower him, different things that will make this champion uh, stronger. How I mentioned, I don't think he's gonna be the champion you're gonna take in Classic Arena to destroy opponents, just because he's not really that sort of champion but for classic arena for example uh, for live arena sorry i feel like he's gonna be very very interesting and uh yeah i like that he brings uh his survivability i feel like he's so so important having a uh, defense champions having a uh, hp champions to use in live arena rather than just the regular attack nukers that get wrecked like this you know so i'm gonna move the gear from my taras to him quickly so let's just do that we're gonna go at the crit damage set. We have a couple of pieces from here. If I'm not mistaken, we have gloves on Taras. So let's equip the gloves. And we have the chest piece. Trash chest piece. Look at this ugly chest piece. Who wants to have such a chest piece? My god. Absolutely horrible for, uh, for these nukers. 
And uh, if we're gonna go at the Savage, we're gonna take the rest, the rest on him. Helmet, shield, and boots, right? The boots are actually bad. Like, leaving the, the joke on the side, the boots are actually bad. Not very nice. Because uh, they have a lot of uh, rolls on, uh, on flat things, if I'm not mistaken. Or on the wrong ones. Shield is good, not bad, can't complain about that. And boots, where are the boots? I do have speed boots on him, actually. So we can go in like this, you see? Ah, uh, no, the boots were bad because they ascended wrong. Okay, that's why they were bad. But other than that, the boots are good. And uh, small rolls on uh, some of the things. Okay, not bad, not bad, not bad. Okay, so there we go. Our croc is ready for a live arena fight. Shame we cannot test that on the test server, but we're gonna go in the regular arena. We're gonna test his damage. Not to mention, he can be great on a stun set, guys. So if you really need help from this champion, on Doom Tower waves, or you, you're struggling to beat Faction Wars for whatever reason. Somehow, maybe you're just gonna pull this champion and he's gonna be your only legendary from that uh, faction. On a stun set, he will be great, but you still need a full crit rate, okay? Because that will enable his A1 to become AoE and land a lot of stuns left and right, basically. So, total stats on Mr. Croc, we have 105k HP, 3.1k defense, 260 speed, full crit rate, 281 crit damage now of course we do not have him uh, awaken we have no stars on him you've seen the gear this is the ring so it's an hp ring we have a crit damage amulet and we have an hp banner shame we don't have defense percentage on it that would make it much much better masteries offense and of course we have defense Helm Smasher as tier 6. And probably some of you guys might be wondering, Scratch, why do you have Bring It Down? Increase, increases the damage inflicted by 6% when attacking targets with higher max HP. Like, who's gonna have higher max HP than this champion? Pretty much every support champion that uh, is well built and just kind of like adjust everything to your own level. This build is based on my account, based for the tier where I'm playing, right? So I'm encountering... Uh, opponents that have very similar stats with what I'm showing you. Probably you're gonna be in lower tiers, some of you, some of you might be uh, at the same level with me, but adjust everything to your own level and keep in mind, if your champion will have 60-70k HP, that's what you can get on your croc. Well, consider that the opponent's revivers, Duchess or whatever other champions you're going to encounter in your arena fights, the, regardless if it's classic tag team arena or uh, live arena, they will have more HP because they don't need to get crit rate, they don't need to get crit damage on them, so they will be able to inflate those stats. So that mastery is very, very important. And how you mentioned, uh, how you know, important, and how you've noticed, and how you've noticed we have a uh, retribution on uh, the defense tree. We, we want to go with a, a bit of counter attack, that might be very helpful for him. Support tree is pretty irrelevant for the champion. That being said, we're going to take him in in the dragon to test the damage and then we're going to go to arena. And let's give them a go and see what croc can actually do, what sort of damage he's going to bring in here. Let's check the animations as well. So we're going to put the defense down and we can nicely land it. Nobody got resisted. So let's just check. I actually love the armor on, uh, on the back. It looks super cool. I haven't noticed that uh, before because I haven't rotated the champion. But from the back actually looks like so, so freaking cool. Looks like a Godzilla, you know. So let's just buff, so we get increased crit rate, increased crit damage on all the team, which is nice. It's not really going to be very helpful for your support champions, but even that can actually help you a bit. Getting that extra crit rate, that extra crit damage on them, you might need to pick a bit, just to pinch some damage on, a, on their uh, DPS champion or something, and that might help you when your support champion will go and hit them, maybe your Arbiter or other champions that you're using, you know, so it's actually decent. Let's see this animation. Oh, nice, nice. This is actually pretty sick. It's like a, a, a swamp opening up and just some claws in there. The claws didn't really make sense on his animation, but it actually looked nice. The damage was not... Wow. The damage is not something that will uh, literally put you, put you on your back. But you know what? How I mentioned, it's going to be nice because of that uh, survivability. And then the A1 coming in, wiping everybody else because it became an, uh, an AoE, which is very nice. Okay, so pretty nice animation on the on that A2. The A1 is nothing insane. It feels like it's the same animation with Big Gun. I think Hero he makes a flip as well at the same time. So let's let's do another another hit here. 
we can buff. And we can actually just... Bang! You see, the damage actually looked a bit better now because we got the masteries up and uh, up and rolling too. So, not too bad as a, as a DPS champion. I'm trying to think of a different champion that has similar multipliers with him. Definitely not Taras, of course, because he, he hits much harder than that. I think, I think the multipliers are average ish. You know, that's kind of like how I would uh, I would place the multipliers, and I would not rely on him or count on him to be like he's my number one classic arena nuker for the high tiers. For the lower tiers in goal five, pretty much every every nuker will wipe them off. You know, so he's gonna be great in there. Don't get me wrong, he's gonna do an amazing job, but. I wouldn't use him in Platinum, I would definitely, definitely use him in Live Arena if I would pull the champion, you know, because uh, Live Arena is being played a bit different, uh, it's gonna be solid, uh, solid for Tag Team Arena, these game modes, unfortunately, they are not available on the test server, guys, Tag Team Arena, uh, Live Arena, but it's pretty much the same sort of, uh, the same sort of vibe, if we're gonna go to Classic Arena. I would definitely not use him against a tanky team like this because I feel like he's gonna take us forever to kill them. But just for the purpose of the video, we're actually gonna gonna attempt to kill his team. You know, I definitely, definitely think that uh, it will take us quite a bit. You know, quite a bit. We don't we don't need that nacrit in here, and I do want to bring a lockout champion. So let's just go buy uh, recently used, recently used first. Let's bring Krixia in because why not? She's new, let's play around a bit with her. And let's bring Ramantu, man. Let's bring Ramantu. They don't have five star, uh, a six star polymorph, you know? So that will actually help us. That will actually help us. I'm gonna let his Mitrala to do, to do her things if we're not going to lock her, of course. Attacks all enemies, increases the duration of everything. We've done it on Mitrala, beautiful. So now we can actually use Ramantu. The only problem is my Ramantu is a bit slower than the Nuker here, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. So we're gonna buff. And I'm gonna go A1 first on that candy. Bang. We almost got candy down though. We almost got candy down. Okay. There we go. So now we should be we should be able to deal damage now. Let's do that. Doesn't matter if you're getting polymo. Ah. Oh, that's nasty. We got we got locked. We got locked by uh by that uh, Ursega, but again, we're gonna go A1. We're gonna go A1 on Mitrala, actually. Nice. So we're slowly picking them down, though. With Ramanto is much better because we're disabling their passives, you know, so it makes such a big difference. It makes such a big difference. Okay. Croc, I'm counting on you. So I have the buffs, but you know what? Let me buff the entire team, get the extra turn, and wipe everybody off. Okay, almost, you see? So the damage feels... Feels a bit underwhelming, actually. The damage feels a bit underwhelming. I thought that he might be dealing a bit of more damage, considering the passives were down on the other ones, if I'm not mistaken. But not being able to kill a Kendra phone or kill even Demitrala with the, without them having any other buffs except the Veil is a bit like, seriously? Seriously? But let's, let's try to do another fight where maybe they're not as tanky. Or, you know what? Let's just go for another tanky team, because... Scratch just can't help it, you know? We cannot help it. We're gonna buff our crit damage. I'm I'm trying to understand why they're making why they're making the champions so uh so weak in terms of multipliers recently. Like I'm I'm not I'm not getting it. So Rotos will be an issue because uh what's going to happen, we're gonna get uh, weak hits, or it's a very high chance to get a weak hit, you know. There we go. Actually it was not a weak hit, so we can do this now. Disable passives, beautiful. And let's just go A1. Do your thing. And now we should be able to buff and just try to wipe everybody off. I'm very curious to see. Harima's passive is disabled, right? So it doesn't, doesn't even uh, count that she's there. So let's just check the damage. 52k, 37k. We got Rotos down. The damage on Duchess is pretty, pretty weak, actually. So. Yeah, I'm not I'm not very impressed with the damage. I feel like even for Live Arena, it's gonna be pretty hard to, to wipe the enemy team down, you know. But again, I think he can be useful for uh, 
Live Arena, Tag Team Arena, and how I mentioned lower tiers of Classic Arena. Just for the simple fact that he brings his own survivability, tankiness, etc. You know, so I feel like that's that's definitely a, a plus on a, on the list. There we go. We got Duchess down. So from here on, we can slowly wipe the rest of two. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. I feel like it would be much better to have this skill with a double hit. A double hit would actually make damage. Maybe lower the multipliers to 0.25 double hit or make it a single hit and give a multiplier of, I don't know, uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.45. So the multipliers need to be increased on the champion by 30%, I would say. 30, 30 to 50% actually, just to kind of like make it, make it look better when we are talking about DPS. If we're going to look for a squishy team, yes, most probably we are going to wipe that off, you know, but I don't personally think that that will be enough, you know, like squishy teams will be wiped off by everyone. The regular KL, the rare KL will, will wipe them off too, you know, like pretty much every nuker will wipe them off. It's just mainly them to, to bring in some, uh, some utility, you know. So let's just do this. And let's let's just play it on auto. Let's put it on a 1x speed. Passives down. Buff. Nuke. And funny enough, that Duchess still survives, man. Like, I don't think she's that tanky. And the passive is down too, you know? Like, the AoE damage that we're dealing should not, should not be reduced, you know? By her passive. So, <clears throat> you know? I had higher hopes for his damage a bit, honestly. If I would summon him, I would still build him for live arena, try him out. If, if I would get wrecked because I'm using him, I would probably vault him after and just leave him there for the moment. Great for faction wars, but most of the champions are great in that area. On a stance that he can be uh, better for a Doom Tower, for example, you know, just to help you on the waves if you need that. But that was all for the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think about Krokmar the Devourer? Appreciate every single one of you guys watching. Much love and I'll catch you all soon in the next video. Peace.